five bag brands I'm not buying from, don't want to, and why. Hello, welcome or welcome back to Classics with a Quirk, where I talk about contemporary and luxury designer items and brands with a touch of silliness. If this is the kind of content you find interesting, please do like this video and subscribe for more of it. Thank you. Another tag video today, and this tag is the five designer bag brands that I am not interested in buying, possibly have never been interested in buying, and why I am not interested in buying from these brands. I was tagged by my friend Train Girl Megan, and the tag was started by With a Touch of Luxury. I will link both of their videos below for you, so feel free to check those out as well. And I'm going to just get right into it. I will say first that I'm not saying that these bags are bad, the brands are bad. Well, some of them, some of them might not be bad. There is one in particular that I don't want to buy because I think that it's immoral. <laughs> I'm gonna get into that in a minute. But uh, for the most part, if you like these things, obviously don't let me stop you. And if you disagree with my opinion, that's also fine. We all like different things. Everybody is different. That's great. The world needs variety. So I'm gonna just start off with the first thing on this list, which is Mulberry. And I will caveat by saying this, Mulberry has great leather. Like they've got good bags. I just don't care for their designs. I've never liked Mulberry designs. I don't like that like big metal plaque that looks kind of like a wonk nose in the middle of the bags. I don't like that. I just, I've never found that plate of metal attractive. I, I don't like it. And so all of their bags have that. And so I've never been interested in a single Mulberry bag. <laughs> Um, especially too that sometimes they have, I think it's the Alexa, has those leather bits that come down on either side, which uh, Emma Anders did a video on this that apparently they're very annoying to use because you have to you deal with the magnets on each side every single time and then the clasp and it's a little bit annoying to use it, which I don't like annoying bags. Just I, I don't, I like convenience when I'm carrying my things around. So that's another thing that I think about when I think about not buying Mulberry. But I just, I really can't get over that big metal plate that just looks like a nose or an open mouth. And so I, you know, I can clock a Mulberry bag. Most of us can. I just, I don't like what they look like. Um, I never, I never have. And that's all I'm going to say because I keep repeating the same thing because it's, that's, that's, it's not any deeper than that. I just don't like the design or, of it. Uh, in the same way, Givenchy, I've never been drawn to any of their bags. I, you know, I remember when the Givenchy Indigona was like so huge, or the Indigona, which, whichever way you want to pronounce it, was so big on YouTube. Like I remember kind of getting into YouTube when that was a big bag going around. And I, it, it's like a kind of, it's like a geometric box, but it, the zipper is really hard to use. Like it's fussy. It like you script, it's like the opening, it doesn't open very wide from what I've seen. I just, I've never really liked that bag. And Givenchy has come up with other bags that I don't like they're they're very trend and and I don't mean trend in like a bad way I just mean that they're very of the times and I feel that Givenchy bags date very fast because they're made for like this spring summer collection and it lasts for a season and then it's like done whereas there are some bags that I think last a little bit longer in terms of being dated now I don't think that you can't wear a dated bag like goodness knows I have a lot of vintage pieces like there's nothing wrong with wearing a bag that's older but I do think like, you know, buckles and loops and, and leather bits and strings and I, I just, maybe I'm boring. Maybe I'm just like, I'm, I'm boring and I don't like that, that kind of, you know, flair to my bags, but I, I never have. Um, in the same way, Chloe is also on this list. I, I don't care for Chloe's designs. Like Chloe is a very bohemian kind of bag brand. And for people that like that style, like power to you, it's great. But I just, I've never really cared for like the Chloe Faye, the Chloe Drew. I, they're just bags that I've never gravitated towards. And I've never wanted to own a Chloe piece. I've, I've never been drawn to them in a way that made me really look at the brand more than going, oh yeah, it's, that's a bag that I don't really want. You know, I, that's, you know, this tag is a little bit tricky. Well, not tricky, but like a lot of this is just like, oh, I don't like it because I don't like it. <laughs> it's not like, it's not very deep or, or, or meaningful. It's just that it's just a, a reason behind not liking a design or not liking a pattern or not liking a leather. But actually nothing on my list are, are 
bag brands that I don't particularly care for the leather. I didn't even put that down. It, they're just, I don't like their designs. Strathberry is number four. I think the Strathberry are very beautifully made bags, but I have never liked a single Strathberry bag that I've seen. They've got the bars that look so fiddly to use and it makes the bag difficult. It like cumbersome almost to like open and close them. Hello, a kitty. And I just, I think sometimes, I, you know, Strathberry, Chloe, even Giovanni a little bit of this list, I think that sometimes bag brands or, or design houses will get into an idea of this is what we have to design. You know, Strathberry with that metal bar on almost all of their bags. Like th that's like their signature. It's in the same way that the mulberry like plaque is, is the mulberry signature. And so they don't really do anything aside from that signature thing. And if you don't like that signature thing, then you're not gonna like those bags. So it's, you know, it's it's kind of not that deep. It's just, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I don't care for it. I think that other people can rock them, but I've never wanted to wear one myself or own them one myself. Maybe this isn't the, this is going to be a very fast tag video, but, uh, you know, feel free to tell me in the comments how you feel about any of these brands, or if you like one of these bags, like, that's also fine. Like, please feel free to tell me, like, if you own a Mulberry Alexa and you love it and it's your most used bag, like, power to you, that's great. It's just, you know, not for me. The final brand on my list, though, is a brand that, you know how I alluded to in the beginning, um, brands that uh, might be morally uh, corrupt a, a little bit. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about the obvious one, which is Balenciaga. That's the obvious one. I'm, I'm not going to even mention them besides what I just did because I don't feel like, I feel like everybody has kind of touched on Balenciaga at this point. I made a whole video about the Balenciaga like thing that went down and specifically talking about like child exploitation in the media, which I think is not great. But the other brand that I don't buy from and never will, at least as long as the current people who own it currently own it, is Dolce & Gabbana. Now, I've mentioned this a couple of times before that I don't buy D&G and I'm never going to buy D&G, and that is because they have a huge history of racism and homophobia. Just, they're bad. They're like the people who own it, the people who make money from Dolce & Gabbana. Like the people, Dolce & Gabbana, the people who own the company and are currently raking in the profits, who are directly benefiting from their brands selling their items are making money off of the fact that Dolce & Gabbana is a popular brand and they have a huge, huge, horrible history of homophobia and racism and being like awful to people. Like just, it's like you can Google it and people like, it's not great guys. And the thing is, is that many fashion houses don't have squeaky clean histories, but there's a difference in my opinion. There's a difference in my opinion between a brand or a company that currently has the people who are problematic running it or earning the money directly and a company that had someone problematic in power previously and they are no longer in power and they're not earning anything from it anymore. Dolce & Gabbana, the, the owners of Dolce & Gabbana who have the history of homophobia and racism are directly benefiting, they're directly profiting from people buying their merchandise at this point. That's my problem. And that's why I will never buy a Dolce & Gabbana piece as the, at least as long as they're in power and earning profits from it. You know, you're supporting, you're supporting someone who actively is harming other people, actively. And that's different from supporting a brand that had a history or a past, where mo most of them do, had a history or a past and they're not making any money from it anymore. I do think those things are different and so that's, why I got a little bit heated. So yeah, I guess that's that's my tag. I, was this fun? Was this fun? I just feel like I talked really fast and I said a lot of quick things, but these are the brands that I've never been interested in, probably never will be interested in. Most of the brands on this list are just like, I don't care for their designs personally and that's totally fine. If you would like more information about anything I've said today or would like a full video about anything I said today, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'd be interested to hear what you think about my picks and why I picked them, but please do be kind in the comments. Just remember that this is, uh, to quote Caleb Snell, a safe space, and I, I would like to just uh, please remember to be kind, especially when talking about like people actively being harmed by certain things. Anyway, <laughs> if you like this video, feel free to give it a like. It super duper helps the algorithm and subscribe for more content that helps the algorithm even more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Kitty cameo. And there she goes.